People of Reddit, what are some of your unexplainable and creepy experiences? Serious. Not long after my husband and I were newly married, he was taking a shower in our end suite bathroom while I was in the laundry room. He yells for me, and when I go to see what he needed, he asked what I was just doing in there. I told him I'd been in the laundry room. He says he saw a woman through the shower curtain. He makes me promise not to tell anyone, because he thinks they'll think he's crazy. I didn't say a word, and a few weeks later, my sister and nephews came to stay for the weekend. The youngest was about four years at the time. My husband goes someplace with his dad and brother, and it's after dark. My nephew is watching TV while my sister and I are in the kitchen. The hallway leading from the kitchen goes to my room. My bedroom door is closed, and my nephew says, I thought you said uncle was gone, we ask him what he means, and he tells us that he saw someone come through my bedroom door. Needless to say, I didn't go back to our room till my husband came home and we then told my sister about the woman in the bathroom. A few years ago, my husband was working overseas so my cats and I took the advantage of all being able to cuddle up in bed and watch TV. Towards the door to the bedroom, we have a coat rack that has been, and had been, there for years. As we're all snuggled up, I watch the coat rack slide across the floor horizontally a few feet and then just throw itself down in the middle of the room. My cats jumped out of bed as fast as they could, and I was screaming. I waited a few minutes, after turning on every light in the house, to check it out and put it back where it should be. It never happened again. My husband still believes that a cat probably ran off when I wasn't looking and jumped on it, but not only were they in bed with me, but I watched it move like someone was dragging it. Shortly after there were a lot of things like the usual footsteps in the hallway getting louder, knocks on the closet door, and the time my husband and I had the same nightmare at the same time. And yes, I have CO detectors that work. One night my husband and I were in bed, he was asleep, and I was just lying there trying to sleep. Suddenly, he jolts awake gasping and flailing around for a second, then he sits there staring at something just off the edge of the bed on his side. I asked what was wrong a couple times, but he wasn't answering me. I looked where he was looking, and I realized that in the pitch-dark corner between his end table and the bed, there was a face. It was so real that at first I genuinely thought we were being robbed and my husband was being silent because he had a weapon pressed against him or something. But the more I stared, the more it became clear that it wasn't an actual live face. It wasn't blinking or moving at all, and it looked more like when you see your reflection in a black phone screen than seeing it in a mirror, if that makes sense. After staring back at it for probably 20 seconds, I couldn't take it anymore and hid under my blanket like a toddler. My husband flipped the light on, and it vanished, but I still didn't use my eyes again till morning. Not long after my husband and I were newly married, he was taking a shower in our end suite bathroom while I was in the laundry room. He yells for me, and when I go to see what he needed, he asked what I was just doing in there. I told him I'd been in the laundry room. He says he saw a woman through the shower curtain. He makes me promise not to tell anyone, because he thinks they'll think he's crazy. I didn't say a word, and a few weeks later, my sister and nephews came to stay for the weekend. The youngest was about four years at the time. My husband goes someplace with his dad and brother and it's after dark. My nephew is watching TV while my sister and I are in the kitchen. The hallway leading from the kitchen goes to my room. My bedroom door is closed and my nephew says, I thought you said uncle was gone, we ask him what he means, and he tells us that he saw someone come through my bedroom door. Needless to say, I didn't go back to our room till my husband came home and we then told my sister about the woman in the bathroom. So, every year our group of friends chooses a city to vacay in and spits the cost to stay in a big Airbnb together. In 2022, we decided to go to a city about two hours away since two of us out of our group of six were pregnant. She and I were entering the third trimester of our pregnancies. We drive separately and get to the Airbnb after the first car around 5 in the evening. The house is three stories with one large bedroom and bath in the basement. Full kitchen, living space, game room, guest bath, and one bedroom. The top level had two bedrooms and no bathroom. 
The house is old, but renovated. The stairs to the basement have no banister halfway down, and the stairs to the third floor are tight, creaking. The wood floor upstairs wasn't the best having a few holes in the alcove slash hallway to the two bedrooms. So the first car occupants have chosen their rooms. Our single friend takes the basement, and a couple takes the middle level, leaving both pregnant women and my husband upstairs in the two bedrooms. We swim, hang out, go to dinner, come back, and hang out some more before turning in for the night. At this point nothing weird has happened, yes there were a few creepy 1900 black and white family portraits in the basement, but nothing else. So we go to bed, and being almost six months pregnant I wake up and have to pee, checking my phone to see if I can wait till morning, it's 12.27 a.m. The nearest bathroom is on the second level. At this point in pregnancy, my back is hurting, and the bed my husband and I are sleeping on is a queen, we normally use a king. I have to use the slanted roof to get up out of bed, trying not to wake my husband. I straighten my back as I walk across the creaking floorboards. Certain I'm waking everyone in the house with the noise. I get to the stairs, the upper level s bright white paint is reflective with the light making sure I'm fully awake to make the scary descent down these rickety stairs. Ensuring I don't fall and kill myself or my unborn child. Thankfully it goes smoothly, and I reach the second level, taking a deep breath. Before I hear my husband's voice in my right ear whisper shout my name like he sometimes does to get my attention. I immediately turn to answer automatically in a whisper what, but nothing and no one is there. Immediately feeling a sense of dread fills me. The stairs are in the middle of the house and a door to the basement is slightly open to my right. I whisper our friend S name in the basement, thinking he's messing with me, but he doesn't respond. I rush quickly to the bathroom in front of me and shut the door. Hating that I left my phone upstairs so I can make my husband come rescue me. I do my thing before going back upstairs as fast as my pregnant body can carry me. Laying down in bed before asking my husband if he was awake. He of course is because of my heavy walking and the old floors. I quickly relay what just happened downstairs. My husband is very superstitious, he is interested in anything ghost related. Has talked about doing EVP type stuff in known haunted places to try and catch something. What does he say to his pregnant wife? I'm sure it's fine, try to go back to sleep. Thankfully, this response was the correct one on his part. I give my stomach a few comfort rubs and fall back asleep. The next morning we tell our friends what happened as they woke up. The one from the basement first. He told us at 12.30 he noticed a dark figure on the TV screen at the end of the bed downstairs. When he turned to look at it towards the stairs, he saw something rushing by him on the bed. He said he freaked out round the other way and stared at the wall before falling asleep. I relay to him what happened to me that night, and we think it's weird, but get our coffee and make ideal chit-chat until our pregnant friend wakes up. She comes down to the second level planning to use the basement bathroom, since it's bigger. As we are avid horror movie watchers, we relay the events from last night to her. She then tells us that after she got off the phone with her husband, who was unable to come with us due to work, she set her phone down falling asleep to only wake a while later to the lapped chain knocking loudly against the lamp stem. The bedside table was far enough away, and her door closed. She said it could have been the AC kicking on, but the house was pretty hot since it was summer and older. My husband and I use a handheld fan I brought to try and keep us cool at night even with the ceiling fan on, when she checked her phone, and it was 12.30 p.m. We relayed all this to our two remaining friends, the couple who stayed on the middle level. Neither they nor my husband experienced anything that night. On the flowing night, my husband rented us a hotel room, saying to the majority of our friends that it was for the beds and to make sure my back didn't hurt the entire trip. The hotel did have good beds, but before we left the Airbnb to go to the hotel he told me and our friend that is also interested in the paranormal that he didn't feel comfortable staying at that house another night with me and our unborn child. My husband also invited our friends to come to join us at the hotel if anything happened that night. We left, I slept amazingly and woke up without any pain, got donuts, 
and went back to the Airbnb to meet up with our friends before exploring the town. We came in to find three of them sleeping on the couch together and one in the main level bedroom, but they state nothing happened that night. We stayed one more night in the city, my husband and I were still at the hotel, but nothing else happened. Go home safe, gave the Airbnb a helpful review overall, because it was a wonderful place and a suitable location. I know I heard something whisper my name that night. I'm not sure if it was a ghost, skinwalker, or something else entirely, but that sense of dread that filled me told me I was an idiot for acknowledging it so easily. TLDR, friends trip, old three-level Airbnb, heard my husband whisper my name from the second floor when he was asleep on the third, two other people in the house experienced something at the same time on various levels. My superstitious husband got my pregnant but out of there. Last New Year's Eve morning, 2021, I had a horrible feeling there was going to be a car accident. I called my husband to warn him because he drives an hour to work. It wasn't specific to him, just a feeling about the accident. I had already made plans to take my small humans to the zoo that day, as well. On the drive there, I could not shake the feeling, so I was hyper-vigilant of the cars around me. Out of my peripheral vision, I saw an SUV flying up the shoulder of the highway and cut into traffic, almost hitting me. My lizard brain took over and I narrowly avoided what would have been a bad accident. Just a mile or so later, the same jackass caused a three-car smash-up. It was not good. My tiny humans and I are alive because of that horrible feeling that wouldn't go away. I saw an urban myth in the flesh, and it had me questioning my sanity for years. Just for context, I'm Australian, was 17 at the time and living in a rural area in Victoria, Australia. For fun, my BF and I used to go camping often. One of our favorite areas to camp was a bushland area that was out past our local lake. It was one of three camping spots, and it took about 40 minutes to drive there from town. We usually went to Campsite 1, because each campsite was separated by quite a few kilometers. The last site was an almost two-hour drive along a bumpy dirt road. One weekend we decided to go camping at the last minute, so we left quite late. The sun was already setting when we reached the lake, but for some reason we decided to go further out this time. We drove right out to the third campsite and began setting up before realizing that we had forgotten to bring water and essential cooking utensils. We were intending on staying for two nights so we reluctantly agreed to go back in, get supplies, and then head back to campsite one as it wasn't as far out. As I mentioned before, the road connecting these campsites is rough. It also becomes narrow and has sharp turns as you go around the foot of a mountain. You can't travel too fast in this section so we were only going about 50 kilometers. We came around a bend, and as the car headlights hit the bushes on the side of the road, something large moved. My BF slowed down thinking it may be a wild boar, but as we approached, we could see that it was quite a bit taller and longer than a boar. We still couldn't make out what it was as it was dark, the animal was black and still partially hidden by foliage. Then it stepped out onto the road, and my BF immediately hit the brakes. There standing on the side of the road, about six meters in front of us was a giant black cat. A black panther. Neither one of us said anything, we just stared, mouths wide open and in shock. It was huge, over a meter long, and much taller than a large dog. It stood there for a few seconds, just looking at us. After a while it turned around and disappeared back into the bush. When it was out of sight, I immediately felt nervous and told my BF to hit the accelerator. I was scared it would use the bushes and walk up beside the car and attack. We zoomed out of there faster than we ever had on that road before. We had no desire to go back out and camp that night. I kept thinking about how lucky we were that we forgot essential items. Otherwise, we would be eating slash sleeping just minutes away from a predator with nothing but a flimsy tent between us and claws of death. Now here's the thing, there are old folks tales about large cats roaming Australian bushlands. Some of these stories date back to the 1800s. Exotic animal trade was actually widespread in the 19th century and classified ads would offer leopard and panther cubs for sale. 
In my local area, the explanation for large cat sightings comes in the form of escaped circus animals. The story goes, in the 1900s, a pair of panthers escaped from a traveling circus and were never found. Apparently, one of the panthers was pregnant. There is also another theory that suggests they were a mating pair. This could explain why we still see them. They're the descendants of the original pair. This isn't just all hearsay. There have been hundreds of sightings and even camera footage. Two years ago, someone caught footage of a large black cat in the Victorian Otway Ranges. It was all over the news, with some of the best footage ever captured and had people talking about those old folk tales again. It had been years since my sight, and I was still in disbelief about it. However, when I saw the footage I stopped questioning myself and accepted that what I saw that night was real. So yes, you better add panthers to that list of things that want to kill you in Australia. I have a couple to share. I was walking alone around 11.30 p.m., close to the cemetery behind my house, and I had earbuds playing fairly loud music. I'm walking along minding my business, there's no one walking in front or behind me, and I notice this weird noise fading in and out through the music I'm playing. I focus on it a bit more and yep, can definitely hear something else. So, I stop walking, I'm almost to the entrance of the cemetery at this point, take out my earbuds and listen. I then hear from the direction of the cemetery something that sounds like a high-pitch wailing, like someone in extreme mental anguish. I turned around and booked at home, lol. I read later it could be foxes, but after listening to a few examples from YouTube, it definitely wasn't a fox. Details as given finally finished. We sat down and chatted a bit, his back was facing the laundry room, I was sitting against the wall opposite the laundry room. He's talking, and I noticed some flickering behind him in the entrance to the laundry room. I saw it a couple more times, and thinking it's some kind of bug or moth, I focus on it. I'm looking, seeing nothing, then suddenly there's a white figure, as if a person were wearing a white latex bodysuit, solid not see-through, peeking out from behind the half-closed laundry room door. I gasped, and it moved back behind the door. There was no one else in the house, no one, but my BF and his mom had keys to the house, and she was upstairs when this happened. I've never seen anything like that since, and have no explanation for what it was. My BF and his mom have had other experiences in his house, he doesn't think it's haunted though, lol. I think it may have been a deceased family member, like maybe his dad. His dad used to smoke and I've often smelled cigarette smoke in the basement, no one else smokes, as well. Thanks for watching. Please comment, like, share and subscribe. The Internet Surfer on YouTube for more horror and scary stories.